For a closer look at the market settle off, let's bring in Brian Levitt, Invesco Global Market Strategist. Uh, good to see you, man. Happy Friday, except for the markets. Let me reread what Janet Yellen said. I don't expect a recession. She added a reflection of the underlying economy is not the stock market. Let's hope it's not. But what does this day indicate? Well, it indicates that the market continues to believe that the Federal Reserve is behind the curve. And so, you know, anytime you get inflation up where it is, it does speed up an economic cycle. And anytime that you see a Fed behind the curve or policy uncertainty persisting, it does create volatility in markets. And in the last days, we've had very hawkish comments uh, uh, recently yesterday from, from uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell, and yet inflation expectations moved higher. And so it's uh, the market suggesting that the Fed's behind the curve, now pricing in you know, three 50 basis point hikes over the next three meetings, a Fed funds rate to 3% by early 2023. And, and so the investors are grappling with the potential for the Fed having to tighten the screws pretty significantly here. Brian, in addition here, to the Fed being behind the curve. Part of this, too, is what we've already been seeing in this year's tape, which is some of the pandemic darlings and pandemic plays. They're seeing some of that unwinding of the growth or that deceleration of the growth. How much of that is also intertwined within these moves that we're seeing lower? Yeah, and so you had a lot of those names that were trading at pretty lofty valuations um, amid expectations that the environment that we were living in was going to persist. and. Ultimately, what we've seen a shift to is, is some of the more reopening as, as the Omicron variant has dissipated. Of course, we're still dealing with, with other strains, but also the move higher in rich interest rates. And so for a lot of the names that the market had deemed perhaps a bit more speculative or needed a, a really perfect environment to do well, as soon as interest rates started to move higher, the markets took out those more speculative names or what they viewed to be longer duration assets. And um, the, the attention since has been, you know, to focus more on higher quality cash flow generating equities um, as opposed to, to uh, what some have viewed as be more speculative. Brian, the markets, as you say, pricing in that 50 basis point hike, which we haven't had since 2000, but you said three straight meetings of 50 points. What indication do you have that, that that's going to happen? Well, that's what the market's pricing in. So if you look at the Fed fund futures implied rates, you're, you're looking at 50 basis points at the next three meetings. You're looking at 3% Fed funds by early 2023. Now, investors can look at that and look at where the two year has gone and say, okay, the, the bond market has priced a lot of this in. The challenge that we're dealing with is that inflation expectations keep going up. And so that suggests, you know, you've got a 10 year break even in the tips market at over 3%. And so that's above the Fed's comfort zone. And it suggests that, you know, the Fed um, has to move. And, and, you know, we're seeing the equity markets adjust for what is now an expectation of more significant tightening. I mean, remember, December of last year, the market was pricing in two rate hikes this year. Now we're looking at 3% by early 2023. Valuations were elevated and they're adjusting accordingly. Brian, when we think about how strong the consumer needs to be right now to weather for the Fed, what they're navigating, the flight towards this tightening policy that is very much contingent on employment sustaining and that participation rate increasing even at higher wages, as well as right now the price stability measures that the Fed is looking to implement. Yeah, so the Fed feels comfortable with having reached full employment. Um, they don't feel comfortable with price stability, which is why they're moving. You know, it's almost a paradox. The, the consumer was too strong in the pandemic and, 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 the, and the months um, after the initial hit of the pandemic, right when businesses were cutting workers and right when businesses had slashed inventory. And so you ended up where we are today, which was an environment that there was just too much money chasing too few goods. And so the way this was likely to play out this year, or what we all had hoped to play out, was that the consumer demand would start to moderate. You had already seen American consumers when polled saying prices were just too elevated. They were going to back off big purchases. That was going to enable 
the businesses to rebuild inventory. That's what how this story was supposed to play out this year. And then, of course, the Russia move into Ukraine, which has led to a, a shock in prices in, in energy and, and, and agriculture and other commodities and is also continuing to disrupt supply chains. You put on top of that China's zero COVID policy and the supply chain challenges persist and the inflationary pressures persist. So the Federal Reserve's job now is to tighten financial conditions and and they're going to slow demand through tightening financial conditions and, and, and the markets are adjusting accordingly. Now, not enough attention given those China COVID lockdowns. They are out of control. In the few reports you see, they are devastating lockdowns, taking over skyscrapers now. Uh, Brian, a couple of things Jared Blickery said I want to point out and, and get your reaction. He said Friday crashes like this are usually followed by a similar one on Monday. Do you expect that? He also showed all the mega cap stocks just getting pummeled in the last 12 months, down between 20 and 50 percent. Do you expect that trend to continue throughout the quarter? So, you know, in terms of whether Monday is going to follow Friday, I mean, I, I don't adhere to necessarily to, you know, those types of patterns. Um, you know, I think that the, the market is is likely under going to be in more volatility so long as policy uncertainty persists. Now, with the mega caps, what we've seen is move higher in rates and an adjustment in, in valuations. Those that were investors are questioning models whether it's a whether it's a netflix or whether it's a, a a facebook have been hit harder um you know i would expect for for businesses like apple or businesses like amazon um, or even microsoft you know more of the cloud computing business um i don't i i think we've seen pretty significant hits to those parts of the market valuation adjustments with 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 a move in rates but when you think about slowing economic activity amid tighter policy, investors tend to move back towards, towards favoring those higher quality cash flow generating businesses. Brian Levitt, who is the Invesco Global Market Strategist. We're going to continue to watch all of these themes, not just going into the close, but especially going into the Fed's next meeting as well. We appreciate the time and insights here today.